Sid should really stay in his lane and only tweet about La Liga. <laughs> Saying, I can't be the only one that thinks Ericsson to Inter is slightly odd. Of course, the report suggesting this is almost done. Uh, why is it slightly odd, in your opinion, Sid? I think it's slightly odd because, of course, Ericsson had, had been in a position where he had been um, holding off the, the offers from Spurs to renew. That's fine. I mean, and a lot of people have, have suggested that this, well, why is it odd? Because from Spurs to Inter is not, is not a climb down. It's not necessarily even a climb sideways. It's not so much about Spurs or Inter. It's about the other uh, options that he had. And, of course, he, he had handled this or his agents had handled this in such a way that they hoped and thought that this would open up a move to, to Real Madrid and the possibility that that didn't happen maybe to Manchester United. Now, obviously, Manchester United are a, a club in, in a very bad way at the moment, but financially it would have been very important. It would have stayed, been staying in England. And so given that, the, given that this was, if you like, set up to try and end up at the Bernabeu, then obviously this isn't quite what was planned. So it's not necessarily a bad move. I have no idea if it's a bad move or not, but it did feel... Uh, a little like it didn't quite fit where it was supposed to be ending up. Sid hates Italian football as well, of course, <laughs> we know that. Um... <laughs> well, he is right in what he says, Sid, because, you know, the, you've, got, you've got everything there at the end of the season. You, you can pick and choose. And, and the offers for him would have been, I think, plentiful. Uh, but maybe he's getting a little bit cold feet about waiting and thinks, well, this is a great club who are challenging for yep. Serie A and we've got a proven manager here. So I'm just going to take that move now. I mean, I, I, I don't know, but I've got no doubt he would have made a lot more shekels if he'd waited till the summer going on a free. But, you know, that's his choice. Should we ask Gab? Yeah. yeah. Go on, Gab. Well, on the shekel front, he's doing all right. He's going to be making round about the equivalent of 250, 260,000 uh, pounds a week uh, plus plus bonuses and I, I I think he's right he could have made that at Real Madrid at United these days it more feels like they don't want to pay those kind of sums uh, uh, to players above the age of 25 and and that's fine they're going they're going with youth and I think that might have had something to do with it also probably you know he didn't want to stay move to another Premier League club and to a club that that's in a bit of disarray I think he, the Inter's understanding is that. This Real Madrid thing was mostly in the summer. Um, the, the Real Madrid saw him, oh, look, he, he looks a little bit like Luka Modric. Maybe he can replace Luka Modric. And uh, <laughs> then they looked at it and they felt that, you know, we're not really feeling, feeling the love. We don't, we, we, we're not sure where we fit in. Inter gave him the hard sell and they came, they came with the money and this deal's just about done. What's interesting is I, there's no question Conte is going to play him. Um, what's less clear is where he fits into uh, a 3 five, two system and I think we might see a little bit of him in midfield and possibly uh, a little bit of him uh, maybe as a second striker with, uh, with Lautaro or, or with Lukaku just, just to give one of the two a breather. If the, the, other side, the, the other thing is to remember and Gab can correct me if it's, if it's not correct is that and it's a way to entice players uh, from a financial perspective is that for a foreign national he'll get a, quite a big hefty tax break oh. in Italy if oh. he stays a certain amount of time. Oh, it's tax season, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, oh, we've written on this financial... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that's right, I didn't want to go there. <laughs> I didn't want to go there because, you know, I... I I know I get accused by Craig of being boring, but Craig did bring it up. Uh, but yes, uh, you are right. There is a uh, there is a tax break in place. Just how much he's going to benefit, uh, as Craig says, will depend on on how long he stays there, and yeah. and, and and I think the, the extent of his renewal and all these very boring details that I don't want to get into. But there is the prospective to. Oh, we managed to get into it. The there you go. <laughs> and Craig is moonlighting, by the way, for H and R Block yeah. here in Connecticut. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can make sure to make an appointment. <laughs> Via his Twitter. Uh, <laughs> one week, one week to go until the transfer window shuts. Oh. What can happen over the next seven days? Oh. Whatever does happen, you can check out Transfer Talk on the website. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN Plus.